distinguished guests, friends of Papua New Guinea and the Pacific, I'm indeed honored to be able to come this morning to stand in for the Prime Minister who's unable to come because he's attending the, the Pacific Islands Forum in, in Samoa where all our Pacific Island states and our leaders meet every year, including Australia and New Zealand. So he asked me to, on his behalf, convey, convey his apologies and ask me to step in and, and uh, give you an address on where our government is going in this, uh, in this coming five years. Before I do that, I'd like to thank the Business Advantage Group once again for staging this annual event. Thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause for the great effort they've been putting into uh, promoting business and investment opportunities in our country. We are, as government, indeed very grateful. We thank you so much. And uh, we thank you all the investors, prospective investors who've come to attend uh, the seminar yesterday and, of course, today. As we ref reflect on the pa past five years, our government has understood its role as one of working with the private sector to create a more conducive environment for investment in public. That is the role of government. And we, as government, are a very pro-business government. We have worked very hard to try and make PNG a more attractive investment destination for investors like yourselves. Our focus has been on building infrastructure like the roads, better communication network. That has been our focus in the last uh, five years. Those of you who've been to Papua New Guinea have seen what must be transformed as a city. Lay has, has been transformed because of the significant investment we've made in building infrastructure in Papua New Guinea. We are investing in terminals, bringing on new power stations, using gas to fire up our new power stations. So we are investing as a government. We have been and will continue to invest in trying to reduce the cost of doing business and making more affordable and uh, more conducive for, for business to do, do, do business in Papua New Guinea. So that has been our focus over the last five years and we will continue to keep up that focus. I'm happy to inform this conference. Our government was formed in Alatau and we met in Alatau with our coalition partners straight after the, uh, the elections. And we've come up with a new policy called Alatau Accord Number Two and this is going to be the policy framework that will guide the way uh, we do business over the next uh, five years. Clearly, uh, in hindsight, we've learned from the lessons of the last five years and the last 10 or 15 years. Our country has been too dependent on the resource sector. That is the first lesson we've learned as we reflect on the last five years. Yes, we've had economic growth of up to 8% average for nine straight years, unprecedented and not seen anywhere else in the world other than China. And that has been great, but it has been on the back of very good, good prices and on the back of LNG, the first LNG project. It's not something you do every day, and we, we recognize that. I think we can start by saying we've, over the last 14 years, we've had only two governments, so political stability is our number one strength in Papua New Guinea. We've got a very stable government, and we are determined as the only able government to ensure this government remains for five years so that our policies that we put in place uh, will continue. Investors don't have to be shocked. They don't have to be surprised. We, we want a predictable environment for business. Uh, and that's, that's an area that I think is one of the greatest strengths of Papua New Guinea and an area that we want to make sure uh, we continue to maintain a stable political climate for, for investors. Now let's look at the future. Yes, we've learned from over reliance on the extractive sector. Over the next five years, our first policy priority is no longer education, although it's among the top five. Our first policy priority going forward is economic growth. This is the first time that I know in PNG's history, economic growth is the first policy agenda of government. And how do we do that? We have to increase exports, decrease imports and grow value, grow more value and get more value for our resources. That's what we need to do and do quite quickly. 
over the last um, few weeks, our government has been looking at how we take this forward. Clearly, we now need to deliver three key economic impact projects. We must deliver on Wafi Gopu gold and copper mine. We must deliver on the Frida gold and copper mine. And we must deliver on the second PNG LNG projects. Those are extremely high on our list of priorities. And we will be working with our partners in that sector to make sure we deliver these three key projects in the course of these five years in our term. Those three projects will underpin our economy and start to grade, get our growth rates going back the way we were and even higher in, in the next 10 years. So we are focused. We must deliver those three key resource projects. And that will underpin our economy going forward. The next area, we must replace imports. Papua New Guinea does not need to import 800 million kilo of water of rice every year. We've got an interesting incentive package and we are looking for investors to grow rice. And we will find investors, either from Australia or from around the globe, we are looking for investors to invest in the rice sector. We don't need to be looking for foreign currency if we start to replace a lot of the imports that we, we currently uh, import. So we are looking for significant investment in import replacement. I'm excited to tell you, you had a, a presentation from the LR Group yesterday. By January, Papua New Guinea will produce its first dairy product from a farm in Papua New Guinea. We are importing 400 million kina worth of dairy products annually. In the next five years, we want to replace that totally. We are looking for investors to invest in the dairy sector. We are looking for another three or four more farms. We don't need to be importing all our sheep from Australia and New Zealand. We need to start a, a sheep industry, especially for our meat. For cattle, we are importing half of our beef requirements from Australia. We don't need to do that. We are looking for investors to come in and uh, invest in, in cattle. With our fresh veggies, uh, thank you, uh, the LR Group, with your investment in Papua New Guinea, we have now replaced the uh, import of fresh veggies by up to 70%, and we are working to replace import of fresh veggies from Australia in the next two to three years. So that's a sector we are going to be really focused on. For grains, we are currently importing all our grains from, from other countries. We want to invest in, in maize, and other products so we can start to produce all our feed for chicken, for pig, what have you, within Papua New Guinea. Other than import replacement, we are also looking to grow uh, our investments in other sectors to increase exports like palm oil, coffee. We want to look at downstream processing as a big ticket item for our country. We need to get more value. In the fishery sector, we need to build a the Medang Marine Park, we are working on, on funding. We want to build 10 more canneries and processing plants so all the f fish caught in PNG waters is processed into final products or near final products in Papua New Guinea. We think we will make another two billion, bring another two billion into the economy by doing that. In the tourism sector, we are looking for more investments in hotels, in, in tourism products in Papua New Guinea so we can continue to attract um, tourists coming to our country, we are looking at more investments in more private airlines coming into Papua New Guinea, even to compete with New Guinea. We, when I was trade minister, we worked very hard to bring in the Philippine Airlines, for example. By the time they got into Port Mosby, airfares had dropped by two thirds. We are now getting a lot of tourists from, from the Philippines, only because we were able to bring that airline in. We are open, open for business. Yeah. And I'm, I'm saying this in front of the New Guinea chairman, we need to bring more competition in this sector in the banking sector, in all other sectors. We are looking at more competition. We've got to drive the cost of doing business done in Papua New Guinea, and that an area that the government is very focused on. So what I'm, am I saying to you all? Despite the, the difficulties we've got, which are short term, our government is focused on making sure we stop the leaks and free up more foreign currency for the private sector in Papua New Guinea. This is a major area of focus for us in the next 12 months. We are looking to replace imports that we can produce locally. We are looking to bring three major resource projects online as soon as we can. 
to start driving economic growth again, grow employment, and start to generate wealth for our country, our citizens, and of course, our partners and our shareholders who invest in Papua New Guinea. For me, I think it's a very exciting time to invest in Papua New Guinea. You have a government that's absolutely pro-business. We understand our role. We have political stability. We want to invest in replacing imports. We are going to deliver three more projects. Our economy will be stronger and have growth rates that will be far better than any other country in the region on a sustained basis. So the message is clear. Our problems are short term. We are going to work hard with our private sector to fix the problems. We're investing in police. We're investing in agriculture. We're investing in law and order. We're putting up more infrastructure like the Highlands Highway. We're looking at investing a billion. The Sydney to Port Mosby undersea cable. We're looking at investing in it 100 million. We are focused on, on making the environment more conducive, bringing more competition, reducing cost, and making PNG a more competitive player in, not only in the region but throughout the globe. So we know where we are going. We are focused and we are looking for help from genuine investors who are not just there to invest but who are there to be serious partners with our people and our country. We are looking for the investment partners of the long haul. And we hope those of you who are here this morning are here because you want to invest in our region and of course in Papua New Guinea. So I think those who invest early and invest now when we need investors will not make a mistake. Look at rice, for example. We don't need to import 800 million kilowatt of rice. You can't go wrong. You have a large domestic market. The same thing with dairy products. Whatever we produce, firstly, we've got to, to satisfy our local demand. So you're not looking for a market. It's a very exciting time to invest in Papua New Guinea. So I'd like to encourage those of you who are here, who are conversing opportunities in Papua New Guinea, to come up and, and talk to government, talk to the private sector. We're happy to listen. We're happy to make time to meet you. Uh, we want to, to support you to make investments this and to assist our country uh, build a more robust economic sector and a stronger economy that's not overly dependent on the resource sector, but one that will sustain the and pass the test of time, despite the swings in the global market. I want to conclude by saying, our government firmly believes, despite our problems today, over the next few years, PNG will be a very exciting place to do business. We have proven that we are prepared to not only go to Australia, but around the globe to find partners like the Ella Group of Israel. I know there are investors from other countries who are here. We are open to talk to all of you. We are keen to open our doors and bring investors who are going to help us replace imports, increase exports, create value for more value for, from our raw materials so we can become a stronger economy and have the economic muscle to look after the great needs of our people and the aspirations of our country going forward. So with our prime minister who's come from the private sector, you are in safe hands. You have a government that will listen, a government that is very friendly to business, and a government that wants to see more investment in Papua New Guinea. With that, I want to thank everyone on behalf of our government for coming to this summit here in, uh, in Sydney. We welcome you to, to consider Papua New Guinea as an investment a destination. We have delivered on the first LNG project. We have shown to the world that we can deliver. We are looking forward to APEC next year when we will market Papua New Guinea to the world. Uh, we welcome you to come to Papua New Guinea at this time. And of course, the head of um, APEC 2018 is here and we'll talk to you uh, later this morning. But I think it's a very exciting time to invest in Papua New Guinea. We are keen to find partners. And I truly hope many of you who are here will determine as a result this conference and other meetings to come and invest uh, in Papua New Guinea in some of the exciting opportunities that are available for us uh, from now and well into the future. And I can assure you, Papua New Guinea will have a stronger economy in the future. It will be a country that you can share your investments and grow value for, you, for your shareholders by investing in, in Papua New Guinea. With that, thank you very much for having me this morning.